brother strong oh mlungise good to see you <laughs> good to see family. you too my friend yes. how are you doing everything's fantastic yeah yeah yeah. Joburg. yeah yeah it's already been here yeah 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 uh this is long overdue this would have been done like weeks ago but of course i mean there's 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 always a reason for things not to happen at a certain time the timing is perfect i think it's world aids day today yes yes it is it is it yeah. is so no the yeah. timing is perfect it's it's good to celebrate the music of activists on a day like this sure 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 cool man while we're still busy here with my technician please introduce yourself to those who doesn't know you for sure well, Umlungisi and I, we've known each other for a year. We worked together on the Jazz Against Apartheid show and the Homecoming Festival for the Legacy of Johnny Diani in 2022. This was on the birth date of uh, what would have been Steve Biko's 77th birthday. Mm. But uh, before meeting Umlungisi, I'd actually been involved with um, South African jazz for, gee, since the since the the mid to late 90s when I left school. It was immediately mm. South African jazz that uh, attracted my attention. I can say uh, Winston Mankunku was um, possibly one of the first um, shows that really um, uh, stretched my imagination. Although, you know, I'd seen Sipo Gamedi before in Durban. Durban had a, quite a vibrant scene uh, yeah, whilst yeah. I was still at school in the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. Coming to Cape Town, um, with seeing Winston Mankunku at the yellow door in the crawl. Oh thought, man. <laughs> yeah, in Gugaletu. That that was quite an inspiring moment to see what jazz sure. can do, how much joy it can bring to to mm. people and also to oneself, how you can just let go of um everything and enjoy the moment for what it yes. is. So yeah. since since then it's been a long journey to this point and and as you know, we we're so blessed to have sure, that, sure. Uh, this international um, meeting, you know, this uh, suddenly it's uh, you see that this message of joy and upliftment is is a worldwide. Mm, mm, it is, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, with you, when 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 did you do? In fact, instead of starting the music, you know, uh, maybe from listening or from at home, uh, from you know, from the friends around. When did you become interested in music other than just playing? Because I know you're a, you're a, you're a mean trumpet player too. Just your interest in music before the Yellow Doors and meeting all these other people, you know, how did that happen? Well, uh, that's actually quite a quite a deep story because it's it's really um, a, a medical a medical situation with me. You know, I had mm. a medical illness and I really required um, a lot of healing. Sure. And I think that's that's uh, brought a brought a change of life and um, really music suddenly was an integrative force, you know. Mm -hmm. Before I'd I'd experienced music on the radio, but actually um, leaving school, uh, needing a lot of personal healing, and then mm -hmm. just seeing the power of music, it really did happen um, in that integrative community kind of way. And that's why you know you mentioned the trumpet. That's a perfect example of the healing power and also the community because I studied at uh, Ukusa Music Outreach School. I don't mm. know. No, you know Ukusa. Up no, no, no. Out at UKZN. Mm, mm, mm. And it's uh, it's really amazing to to also start learning at a community level. You know, sure, where it's, sure. it's it's really the healing and the power of the community. That's that's uh, something that took me there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, man. Then, then you grew from there uh, until you met up with the greats, uh, as you've mentioned, Winston. I mean, Winston Mankunku and and others. Uh, that journey now, starting from you know the healing that you're talking about, because you needed to heal, and then you met up with these great musicians, Winston Mankunku. The inspiration that came from them, how did they impact it? How how they impacted you? Well, Mlungisi, that's what created the book series. I mean, it was so okay. much inspiration from so mm -hmm. many people and so many legacies that eventually mm. I can say I was asked um, specifically by Sedumo and Gidi um, there mm -hmm. at uh, 
um, Stables Theatre in um, in KZN Durban. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful theatre. Also, lovely history there. You know, um, Casey Govender founded it, and another community centre, real jewel. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful artist there. And I think um, this was the driving moment because uh, Sidumo kind of said the story needs to be told. Our story needs to be told. And, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was about 2012, and uh, the book started mm. coming from then. So the inspiration okay. can't really be put into one word, um, mm. except maybe far-reaching. It was far-reaching. So many, so many musicians. I mean, uh, the lists are endless. And as we're seeing now with um, these events, you know, there's so many unsung heroes as well that have contributed and sure. passed mm. on. Mm, mm, mm. Now, now there's this big uh, international community, if I could call it that, that that has developed, uh, you know, over the years up to what we are doing. That especially what we are going to do at, at the end of the year on the on the seventeenth, sixteenth, and the seventeenth of December. How did that all come about? How did that that because it started in 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 uh, Johnny was still alive, right? When the Jazz apartheid was 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 established absolutely absolutely yes. performed at the opening festival uh, in which year in was that 86 1986 but i think mm. um how it came about was um really it was the cultural activist uh, jürgen in okay. germany and he was aware you know the blue notes were very culturally active there was mm. an artists against apartheid movement already in sweden and mm -hmm. I know, uh, Johnny was in exile in Sweden at some time, as was mm -hmm. Fifi Kladi, you know. Oh, yes. yeah. And I think yeah. Jürgen uh, wanted to do this event in Germany in specific. You know, I think mm -hmm. Germany also has, um, you know, a strong uh, history of resistance as well, mm -hmm. and particularly Frankfurt. And he had a cultural activism organization. He saw Johnny Diani performed and immediately reached out to him and he said, I'll I'll join I'll partner with you in making this project happen. They did the mm. first show together, and I mm -hmm. believe this is when uh, Johnny Diani fell on stage, and he he passed away shortly afterwards. And I know Peggy mm -hmm. Leswazi was at that concert, so oh yes, yeah. mm -hmm. blessed to have um, exiles returning exiles like mm -hmm. to that that return of this memory. But mm -hmm. uh, what really happened was it was his band members. Um, particularly people like um, Makai and Shoko mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, Harry Beckett and John Chikai. Those yeah, things yeah. come up a lot if you speak to Daniel and Claude, who were there mm -hmm. from the start. But it appears that they continued to perform Johnny's repertoire of music. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. was then passed on to Daniel and his generation of musicians. That was in the early 90s. Alan was living in Frankfurt, the trombone player. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And there were all all musicians that started to join the project, and Christopher Dell, who will come this year. That was mm -hmm. possibly in the early the microphone 90s. player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. when I see that the South African exiles still living there, and uh, these um, compatible musicians from the UK and the German musicians started joining. And I see um, Makai is a, a strong part of this, and Claude Depp is a strong part of this. Mm -hmm. Thomas Diani, you see, um, was also performing at some time. So mm -hmm. it's also a strong part of this development. But sure, that's sure. that's how it came together. Mm -hmm. Now how it came to the Eastern Cape is a is a, another story because <laughs> it had been going for over 30 years in Germany. And then uh Vusi uh put put the project forward to the um OR Tambo committee. And they mm. granted Jürgen with the, the award, a very prestigious award for mm. his role in the in the struggle against apartheid, you mm. know, a very successful role. So Jazz Against Apartheid was brought into the limelight in South Africa for the first time, you know, and, and that triggered immediately what well, it must come to South Africa. Ideally, mm. it's um, a project that needs to go into all the universities nationwide. And I think we, we're gearing towards that. Sure. It but should, in the yeah. immediate term and the urgency to bring it back, of course, Johnny Diani was at the center and his home, Duncan Village, Eastern Cape, that yes. became the, the location. And, and people like Peggy Leswazi, um, mm. former ambassador Sovizana, they made it abundantly clear that this event was an Eastern Cape event. 
So that's where we 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 came to Eastern Cape. Yeah, yeah. Wow, man. You know, it came at the right time. Uh, it came at the right time uh, because now there's quite a lot of things that have developed. As we've noticed last year when we were uh, were doing the project, there were there were quite a lot of young young people that have came to the workshop. So those are the people that we really really need to, you know, pass this message through. Uh, you know, these are the ones the mess the, the the young people that has to know what happened, who did what. And there's these kinds of projects that are happening and they're happening not just only in South Africa, they're happening around the world. So that will also create opportunities for them as well to experience, you know, what is happening outside, especially with the people that have history about Johnny and other people, because I mean, that's where they spend most of their lives, especially their adult good life. I mean, Johnny left as he was 17 years old and and then, you know, and Monga Zafes and all of those guys. So that's why I'm saying, it really, really, really came at the right time. As I've mentioned, that even all the universities, they're supposed to study this. You know, they're supposed to study this so that everybody knows, the next generation that comes knows about this kind of a history. You know, I did, I did, as you know, that uh, in 2013, I did a tribute to Johnny, you know, at, at, the, at the Joe of Jazz in, in, in Johannesburg. I invited, I couldn't find the drama that was available who played with Johnny. You know, but uh, there was a guy that I called. He really wanted to come to South Africa for a long time, even paid for his ticket. And I thought, okay, there's an opportunity for him to come. But also to learn about Johnny, because it's nice. It's good when we teach other people from other races or other genders or other people that lives in different countries, you know, to know about this history. This is a very important history. Yes, that's, that is amazing. And also, you know, you're probably aware that Herbie did a tribute recently. At yes, the at the Joe of Jazz. This so, year, so yes. these are growing, yeah. and also you know you mentioned sure. the community centers in Queenstown and your own uh, community group and, and initiatives in education, and then mm -hmm. Gezi Feza, the Machikiza brothers. You know sure, there are sure. so many uh, legacies to bring forward, and I think the Eastern mm -hmm. Cape really is a is a central place for the for the birth of these talents. So, absolutely, sure. the more we know, you know, the more we can do. Um, as a people, yeah, you know, yeah. and the more we can break the boundaries and the barriers, and that's the important thing about all these musicians we've spoken about, is that mm, mm, mm. they're very strong in um, these principles of liberation. You know, they sure, sure. they really stand for for doing the right thing. Um, mm -hmm, all these mm -hmm. musicians, and that's that's a, gives you a certain power to be able to break through the boundaries, like Duncan Village, uh, mm -hmm. Sophia Town, Cato Manor. New Brighton, all these centers, yeah, District yeah. Six, sure, have sure, produced sure. such incredible talent, and it's so great to see now to be learning more about Duncan Village, Pinnacy Saul. I mean, that's brilliant what Sipakazi's just done. It's yes, just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful project. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's that's the kind of thing that um, Johnny Diani just happens to be a, a leader in because he had forty years of these musicians playing his music. Mm, 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 you know, mm. so that's transcribed. It's available to be taught, but it, I've, in my opinion, there's everybody can we can learn from everybody. Sure, sure. We we need to speak to people that are in power to open these doors. I mean, look, everything is there. The only thing that is it's 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 missing for me. That's just my opinion, is to open these doors, especially with people that are in power. You know, that could open. Like for example. We don't have an art center in Queenstown anymore. It's been vandalized. You know, we've tried to to save it. You know, we've tried to save it even before that happened. We had numerous meeting, meetings last year with the department so that we can be able to, because it was closed because of the of the, of the lockdown, the COVID-19 lockdown. It was closed. And then now when everything was eased, you know, and then we went, we said, look, you know, we need to, we need to bring the artists to come and do what they do here. You know, open up, but uh, they resisted. They resisted. If I could be blunt, they didn't want to do it. They came up with reasons that we couldn't even believe it. Anyway, but anyway, that's why. Because the point that I'm raising this, these kind of initiative, they gotta have to go to different communities. It's you know because I mean the, you mentioned Port Elizabeth. That's where Dudu Pukwan and 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 some other guys. I mean, there was a group. If it's still not there, because I mean, most of the guys have passed on. The Soul Jazz Man, uh, you know, uh, Nick Moyake. They they come from there. Dudu Pukwana comes from there. There's still a lot of other artists, 
you know, that that made a mark. Tetem Bambisa, is, although he was with Johnny Jan from Duncan Village, uh, but uh, he lived in, in PE, played with uh, the soldiers, man. So these kind of these are kind of messages and education that needs to go to different areas. Cape Town, Louis Moholo is still alive. You know, we need to take this, but it's just that most of these doors are closed as much as they even closing the financial side of it, because these things, they also need to be financial supported. So we're having those kinds of challenges. Hey, man, Strad, we only have four minutes on my clock. Jesus, man, this. <laughs> oh, 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 GC, well, we've got a lot of time because there are a lot of um, legacies to unfold and a lot of doors to open. But just to put mm. it uh, very clear is that um, the Freedom Charter says the do doors of learning and culture shall be sure. opened. Now, that's yeah. not a negotiation. You know, sure. this is where the yeah. true power resides. You know, yeah, jazz yeah, against yeah. apartheid. They said jazz fights yeah. the struggle and wins. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. a true power resides in this expression for freedom. So I think yeah. no matter what, it's going to happen. And, and I'll be grateful to see it happen in our lifetimes. You know, even though it didn't happen in Johnny's lifetime, we can be sure now, having yeah. seen his music played, having seen people all over the world, that, you know, he stood for a, a dream that, you know, we're still fighting for. We're still fighting sure. for that dream of being together. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I think we're getting there. Those doors are slowly being opened and swinging open and just sharing and doing what we're doing. Community yeah, coming together, yeah. it's just, it's irresistible. Yeah, yeah. Look, for me, I, I really thank you for, for, for coordinating this. I mean, uh, it was not for you. I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it could have, but I mean, ever since I've met you, you've been right up front with this you've been leading this south african project especially on this one i know there quite a lot of others that you've done but with this one with the man who has been in front and for me i really really do appreciate that and and i've said to you before i'm here if there's anything that you want me to do i'm here you just we just i'm just a phone call away from you then we can make it happen we can make it happen you know, uh, this time we're leading the project of the Eastern Cape, myself and Sakila. Let's hope that uh, there's something out that will inspire us to move uh, forward and, and create more, you know, opportunities, because this is all about opportunities as well. Giving the young people a chance, you know, to, to know about what was happening, you know, uh, the days of the apartheid from 1964 when they left. They left in 1964, right? Yes. From 1964 until they died. Monges was the first guy who died, you know, uh, until now. Because, I mean, look, Mon uh, Louis Moholo is still alive. So Blue Notes are still alive. Even if Louis Moholo is not around, but Blue Note will still alive. Johnny Gianni's music and his legacy will, will still be alive. What a blessing. What a blessing and an honor to work with all of you. You know, it's really opened my eyes. I'm Thank also you, so, so grateful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, your last word, my brother. We we will do it again some other time. So we'll yeah. do some other. Well, I think it's Mbizo. My last word is Mbizo. You know, yeah, Johnny yeah. Mbizo Diani has brought such yeah. a wonderful gathering. You know, and yeah, blessings yeah, to yeah. the Mbizo. I don't know how he got the name, what it stands <laughs> for, but it's it's very it's very significant. Mbizo, it's a gathering. Yeah, it's like people like it's the same Mbizo. I mean, when people are. Together. <laughs> that, that's how I met uh, uh, Winston Mankunsku at uh, his Mbiz. Yes. yes. Yeah, thanks yeah. for the Yakal, I mean, the um, his album in 2000. Yes. I can't remember Yakari the name. Molo Africa. Yeah. Molo yeah, Africa. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Right. I'm looking forward to this year. It looks like it's going to be much bigger than last year. We, we have two sets, one international and one, one Eastern Cape band. Man, it's going to be nice. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> for sure yeah yeah, for yeah. Sure. thank you my brother man take care and have a good day we if we don't talk we're gonna meet on the on the the yes. other thing is the traveling man sakila wants me there on the 15th which is i would love love to be there on the 15th for the rehearsals but uh, because of the 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 this station i have to be here and also you know the, the accommodation, of course, I mean, I do have two accommodations, which is the 16th and the 17th. I can organize for the 15th, but I'll speak to him and see if I could be there on that day of the 15th. For the yeah, let's do that. It's yeah, going to be so yeah. nice to spend time. Sure, sure. Cool, my brother. Take care. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Cool, man.